writing barn. I'm gonna watch a lecture with uh, Samantha Mowbray. I, that, I think that's how you pronounce her name. Her debut novel came out this year. I always mix up the words. It's called A Fierce and Subtle Poison. I have read this book. It's set in Puerto Rico. She did an amazing job with the setting. She managed to incorporate culture with the physical description. And Joy Prevo is also gonna be there. Uh, her new book came out uh, recently it's called it wasn't always like this and I'm really looking forward to this lecture I'll see you guys once together I'm here with Joy and Samantha and the lecture just ended and we're gonna talk about uh, a few of the things we discussed in the, the lecture. It was very conversational. We talked about magnetic characters. Mm -hmm. What I want to know is first the definition of that. What is a magnetic character? I sort of define a magnetic character as a fully formed character in the novel so mm -hmm. someone who doesn't necessarily go on a journey or they have a, a negative or positive charge in the story there is in a novel called the goldfinch by donna tart there is a character of boris who is the main character's best friend in imaginary girls by nova and suma ruby mm -hmm. the sister and um Jay Gatsby from The Great Gatsby. Can you talk a little bit about magnetic, magnetic characters who are not in the scene? I was using Julius Caesar, mm -hmm. uh, Shakespeare's Julius Caesar as an example. Julius Caesar is not a like main character, doesn't appear very much, dies at the end of Act Two. Act two. Act two. <laughs> the action of the novel, of course, revolves around assassinating him. And then you'd think that that would be the, the the end like the end game for Brutus Julius Caesar's ghost or even just his presence from mm -hmm. the beyond is influencing the rest of that play also with like a parent figure maybe there was a, a parent that exerted a great amount of influence on a certain person's life that parent might be dead and so that character is not necessarily in the action or in every scene but they are in that character's Headspace. Hey, we mm -hmm. talked about the yeah. the mother figure in um, Julie Murphy's New Dumplin. Mm -hmm. That she is definitely a continual presence, whether she's in a scene or not, in terms of influencing Willow Dean, the main character. Mm -hmm. And you talk a little bit about conflict as well, internal and external, and the layers of conflict. So can you all talk a little bit about that? So you want to set your main character up against something. You want to set him or her up against something that is within so the very typical structures of that is is man versus nature and then man versus man or man versus society mm -hmm. and so that's very broad but you want to sort of define what you mean by man versus man like a battle between two people um or man versus society we're saying it can be a very small society like like the, the the mean girls in the high school or right. huge society like taking down the government or like something like that diversion yeah you want to possibly think about ways to have not just one conflict and so that's what we were talking about when we we're talking about layering and the external them. then has to intertwine with the with the internal and mm -hmm. so you have to know what do they want and then how are basically what do they need which are probably two different things and then how are you going to keep what they want from them as painfully as, as possible <laughs> no. so now we're going to migrate to setting how do you merge setting and character you know the key for setting is that you want to know where obviously where it's set which is not only where but when and you know what are the social mores of the time what did, what's going on politically um, you really want to know a broad range of questions but the key for setting is to be able to present it through your point of mm -hmm. point of view characters so it's not just what's it like um, on Tuesday 
Tuesday in Austin in mm -hmm. 19, um, you know, 89, but what was it like through that particular character's point of view? We talked about object uh, correlative, mm -hmm. which I think is a very useful technique. So first, what it is and why it's useful. An objective correlate is basically using something within the settings, something within um, the surroundings to be the emotional correlate for whatever the character is particular feel, particularly feeling. So rather than them just sighing or rolling their eyes or whatever, or even having a, um, you know, a bit of internal dialogue, um, you'll use a car backfiring in the distance or um, a train whistle mm -hmm. to represent whatever their emotional state is. I mean, obviously more examples than that, but that's the gist of it. And when you're doing research, suppose your novel is going to be set in a specific setting that has a startup like Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you get away from the stereotypes and really dig deep into those specific things and how your character perceives that place and all that? I'm going to set like Finding Paris, which came out last year from me, mm -hmm. um, set in Vegas. But how do does my how do my characters perceive that do they want to be there do they mesh with that setting well or do they conflict and ch with it and chafe up against it and depending on what the answer is to that question then mm -hmm. that's going to influence how they see everything around them can you guys just give a couple of examples of like stories that the character is uh, measuring with the setting and uh, examples that the the character is uh, in conflict with well, the setting. Samantha just mentioned Mean Girls actually it's been a while since yeah. that movie came out out. But, you know, if you think about that, Katie comes back from, she's living in Africa and she comes to mm -hmm. suburban Chicago to a very sort of different type of setting, <laughs> a different type of jungle, which she imagines in her head. And about the uh, the character measuring with the environment. I, I remember you mentioned the uh, Scorpio races, mm -hmm. which, you know, even though the characters are comfortable, there is something else. They're going to learn the... something new once those Scorpio races start for them and they have different reasons for being in it and their interaction with their society and with the race and Maggie Stiefeter's story is going to is going to change them. So you're going to see their perceptions change. My story is set in San Juan, Puerto Rico, which has uh, is just uh, unstable. People don't want to move away or mm -hmm. forced to move away because of economics. There's just like layers and layers of history there. But in It Wasn't Always Like This, which mm -hmm. is my newest book, Emma has become accidentally immortal. So she actually spans about a hundred years during the course of the novel. And while she can chameleon-like fit into a lot of places, she's always and forever going to be on the mm -hmm. move. Mm -hmm. So she's never actually fully acclimating to any one place. So then that's using setting in a very different sort of way, an interesting sort of way, because um, she's going to see these places, but she's never, ever going to find the most, the home for her. Thank you guys so much. Thank that's you. pretty much it. The workshop just ended and I got some food. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button here below. And if you want to see more videos of basically me talking to people who know their stuff uh please subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys next time bye yeah we're all in the business of torturing people yeah, yeah. pretty much uh, yeah.